In this next topic, we're going to describe an autonomous AP deployment, AP standing for access point. First thing you'll notice on this slide is we have a number of access points uh, from, from left to right. One of the access points has a blue box around it. And just think of this as a deep dive into actually how that, that AP is connected. So if we look at this, we have a client that's wirelessly connected to an access point and the access point is hardwired into a switch. And so that's what that diagram on the, on the right hand side is. Basically when you're deploying wireless systems, you have two options. You can deploy each of the APs as an independent device. Uh, it can be autonomous and that means that there is no uh, interaction with any other access points and they are managed independently. The other option you have is to deploy using a WLC, a wireless LAN controller. When we use a wireless LAN controller, the wireless LAN controller basically manages all of the APs as a group. And when I say manage, that means it manages its OSs or operating systems. It manages its configurations. They do things like uh, report back if they see rogue signals and that sort of thing. And so that's what the will see. Now, if you do an autonomous AP deployment, typically you'll find that in a smaller environment. And by small, I mean uh, five or less uh, typically is what you see uh, APs deployed independently. And the reason for that is because if you deploy them as independent devices and you need to make any changes and let's say for instance that you're going to respond to a security threat or you're going to expand the environment that sort of thing you may have to go back through each one of those APs and make those changes and that can be time consuming and so it, it's better most of the deployments you see today are actually done using a will see a wireless LAN controller and there'll be more than one because you want high availability and redundancy and that sort of thing but um, so with an a autonomous AP deployment it's a standalone device it's going to act as an AP so it, uh, clients wireless clients and hosts can attach to, to that and then uh, basically if you need to get in and do anything and in the past it would run an operating system that would look just like any of the OS's you would find inside of Cisco and you would get in and configure that just like you would some of the other independent devices like independent routers and in independent switches and firewalls and, and things like that so that is an autonomous AP deployment it's intended for smaller environments and it still functions just like any other wireless uh, AP would which means it's going to provide connectivity for your clients so and one last thing, the information flow. So you see that, that little guy there, that client, he's attached to the AP. So if he's going to send data out, it's going to go from, from his PC or his laptop into the AP. And then the AP is going to transmit that data via hardwire, via ethernet to the switch that's up above it. So if it's destined to another client, another wireless client on another AP, then we're gonna have the reverse of that. So that switch is gonna send that data uh, across a local area network, and it's going to eventually end up on another switch uh, that's going to be hardwired into an AP and could be transmitted wirelessly to the uh, destination host that's there and so that would be the way that the uh, the transmission path would work for that now we could also send that to a wired host as well but I just gave you an example for a wireless host so that is an autonomous AP deployment some parting thoughts on autonomous AP deployment uh, there are some limitations to this that should be obvious by now uh, so each of those APs is going to have to be managed individually. And I don't know if your typing is better than mine, but if you're doing configuration on, I don't know, the 16th or 17th AP, uh, you could make some errors as you're entering that in. Uh, also think about the software upgrades that will be done a little bit further down the line. When you're doing software upgrades, each of those would have to be done independently as well. And so with this type of design, scalability can be an issue. Uh, one last valid point, uh, there is no dynamic radio resource management or RRM being done like you would have with will see either and what they mean by that is that when you're deploying these APs uh, you basically set them up on a channel and a channel encompasses a, a certain number of frequencies that you're going to use and, and uh, basically when you set these up you don't want any channel overlap when you're setting up your APs and so if you're manually doing this unless you're you're really paying attention to what's going on it's easy to set up two APs on the same channel and put them too close to each other and when you do that the the radio frequencies are basically going to hammer each other and you're going to get some interference is what's going to happen and you're not going to get the throughput or the coverage that you expect.